Welcome to Type C Tech Reviews. Today we're reviewing the LG 34 GP 950 G-B. But if at any point during the video you want to check out this exact same monitor, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links. But let's jump into it. Now jumping right into it, this is a 34 inch 21 by 9 ultra wide monitor. It has a resolution of 3440 by 1440 p aka ultra wide 1440p. So it's gonna have the same PPI or pixels per inch, how crisp and clear the image is as a 1440p 16 by 9 27 inch monitor. So it'll have the same PPI, the same crispness of a 27 inch 1440p monitor. This means the image is gonna be nice and crisp and clear, although it will be a little bit harder to run uh, games at a higher refresh rate because you do have that on the left and right, you have those extra pixels there. Uh, so this will not be quite as much as 4K, but it'll kind of be in the middle between typical 16 by 9, 1440p, and 4K, it'll be kind of in the middle as far as how hard your system has to work to push those frames. Now the panel is a nano IPS panel, which means it has a wider color gamut and it's gonna be faster for gaming than a typical IPS panel. Now refresh rate is fantastic. It has a native refresh rate of 144 Hertz, but it has a factory overclock on it that pushes it all the way to 180 Hertz. That's a lot. Now, not only this, but this has G-Sync, and this isn't just like a G-Sync compatibility. No, this is legitimate G-Sync Ultimate built into the monitor. Now, these changes, especially the 180 hertz, is a big change, and it's a noticeable difference in games, especially fast-paced games. If you're a Warzone player or like a CSGO player, someone that plays competitive, fast-paced games, these are big changes. All right, now moving to brightness, this is really good. Now, yes, it has the HDR 600 rating. Yeah, HDR is pretty good, uh, and it gets over the 600 nit rating. That's fine, but the big thing is that it consistently hits well over 500 nits of brightness in SDR. Just typically, when your monitor's on, it's hitting well over 500 nits of brightness. This adds to the incredible vivid and vibrancy of this panel. This thing is a super vibrant panel, and the brightness adds to that. Now, this panel also has local dimming. Now, this is commonly seen in TVs, not very commonly seen in monitors, really just seen in the higher-end monitors. Uh, however, this one does have local dimming with 56 zones. Now, the local dimming is not incredible. It's definitely not the best local dimming out there. Uh, however, I think it is pretty good. It definitely makes a noticeable difference in games, and again, mostly those darker games. So if you play more like horror games, or if you play like racing games in night scenes or night missions, that's where it makes the difference. It noticeably takes those blacks, which would typically be like a gray, and it doesn't completely make them black, like an OLED or a VA panel but it definitely brings it down to a very noticeable level, especially when things are black, like 100% black, that's when the local dimming really changes it. Now this isn't the biggest change in the world, but the biggest con of IPS panels for gaming is that the black levels aren't as deep. So it does take a step in that direction to further your gaming experience and further your overall experience with local dimming. It just adds the cherry on top, but don't expect it to blow you away with local dimming. It does add a little bit, and I do like that. But the cons with local dimming, it is pretty noticeable on a black background when you're dragging your mouse across the screen. There's a couple different settings to put it in, but aggressive is really the only setting that it actually makes that big of a difference. Uh, and when dragging a mouse across a black screen, it's noticeable. However, when I've had this thing on in gaming, which I've done it mostly uh, with local dimming on, I really never noticed that like local dimming was there. Uh, so I don't think it's that big of a deal, but again, uh, and maybe in some movies it would be kind of annoying. Uh, however, in game, I never noticed that even local dimming was a thing besides the fact that the blacks were deeper. All right, let's talk colors. The colors are absolutely fantastic on this. This is probably one of the most beautiful and vibrant panels out there as a monitor. Okay, so this covers 98% of the DCI-P3 color space. And like we see other monitors, high-end monitors doing this as well. But the big thing is the factory calibration is damn near perfect. The first thing that you really notice when you use this monitor and you take it out of the box, uh, and you can even see in my unboxing when I first used this monitor, the first thing that you really realize is how beautiful and vibrant all of the colors are, especially the reds and the greens. Those things are beautiful in game. Now, not only that, but this is capable of outputting 10 bits of color. Now, you cannot do that at 180 hertz when it's overclocked. You can do it at the typical 144 hertz. Uh, however, I was not able to output 10 bits of color 
and have that factory 180 hertz overclock. But the big thing is with this color, out of the box, you are getting an extremely competent, one of the best ultra-wide gaming monitors, if not the best ultra-wide gaming monitor, and it can do professional video and photo editing out of the box, already calibrated. That is huge. It basically does everything well, except that contrast ratio, and that's always the con for IPS panels. But again, it takes a step in the right direction with local dimming. And that moves us right into contrast ratio, which like all IPS panels, it's 1000 to one. Now the local dimming does make it a little bit higher of a contrast ratio, uh, and this will depend differently on manufacturing between panels, but across the board, it will make those blacks considerably deeper. But again, don't expect this to be like a VA panel or especially like an OLED. It will just make what an IPS already is, and it's a little bit better. Now, as far as IPS glow and backlight bleed on my monitor, I did not see any of that during testing, so that is good. We do expect the quality control on these really high-end monitors to be quite good, and I haven't read anything about people having bad quality control with this, so I think it is pretty good. All right, now response time and ghosting. Now, time and time again, LG has been the top, basically, for response time and ghosting. There is no exception with this thing clocking in at a one millisecond gray to gray response time and the ghosting being basically not there. Now there are four different response time settings. There is off, normal, fast, and faster. Now typically, like LG, the fastest setting, which is faster, is terrible. It has a ton of inverse ghosting. It's unusable. Don't ever use that. Off and normal are good and they basically have no ghosting, but fast has the least amount of ghosting and that's the best setting to put it in. So once you get this thing, it should already be in fast, uh, but you don't really need to change it around. The picture quality, the image quality in fast is basically perfect and there is like no ghosting in fast quite good. Again, if you're starting to see a trend here, fast paced gaming or any gaming, slow pace, fast pace, you wanna look at pretty images, it's a vibrant panel, it's super fast, it's doing everything really well. But beyond that, also the input lag is exceptionally low, probably one of the lowest input lags of any monitor that I have used or reviewed on this channel. So again, for fast paced games, really good. Now the menu system and controls. This is the newer style menu system, so it is prettier than the last gen menu system. Uh, so that is nice, but the functionality is not changed here. It's pretty to look at. There's no learning curve. It's controlled with a joystick on the bottom, front, middle chin. Everything is fast to get to, it's easy to get to, it's pretty to look at. Now, beyond that, there is also two other ways to control the settings of the monitor, and that is with LG on-screen control and Ultra Gear control center. Now, the LG on-screen control and the Ultra Gear control center are both applications that you can change the settings of the monitor with without going into the menu system with that joystick. Now the on-screen control isn't really optimized that well for this monitor. I've used other LG monitors that it can control basically every setting for. With this one, there's only a few settings and most notably what most of you would wanna use it for would be picture in picture and picture by picture. In the on-screen control, you can choose where you want different windows and what you want where. However, I don't know how many of you are actually gonna be using that, but if you do wanna use that, that's what it's there for. And then the Ultra Gear control center is basically just for that RGB ring around the back of the monitor, which we're gonna talk about. And now we're moving into that RGB. You've heard me say a million times, RGB on the back of monitors is gimmicky, it's terrible, it increases the cost of a monitor and it doesn't really do anything because it's never bright enough. And typically, yes, that is true, but damn, this thing is bright. It literally lights up the whole wall behind the monitor really, really impressive. But because of the design, it actually has that RGB around that ring. Uh, and because of that, it doesn't just shoot the RGB back at the wall, but it also shoots it down. So you get that underglow underneath the monitor, which is very cool. Now to control the RGB colors, there is four static modes that are pre-selected, four different colors, and then there are two, like a rainbow mode, and then like a peaceful mode, they call it. Uh, so you can only have those six different colors or settings in the monitor when you get it and you use this wheel, it's almost like a scroll wheel next to that joystick to control that. However, if you want to customize that, you have to get the Ultra Gear Control Center. In there, there is a bunch of different settings. You can choose any static color you want, including a white mode. So you can just have it like a normal white color, which is really cool. And there's a few cool settings. There's like an audio setting uh, where it'll match the audio. And then there is also one where it'll match the screen's colors 
and push them back onto the wall, which is very cool. However, one weird thing is that to actually use that application, uh, you do have to plug it in via the USB type B cable to your PC to actually be able to control those settings, which I guess kind of makes sense but it is still a little weird. But overall, this is the best RGB on any monitor that I have used hands down. This one is totally usable. Uh, I don't even think I would put RGB strips on the back of this monitor, uh, which is saying a lot. So yeah huge and it's awesome. Now basic compatibility is like every other LG monitor. It is compatible with 100 millimeter by 100 millimeter base amount. Now ports are pretty good, including one display port 1.4, one HDMI 2.0, one USB type B upstream, and then the two USB type A downstreams, and then a three and a half millimeter audio out. Kind of weird that there's not two HDMIs. However, I don't really mind it. It is just kind of weird. Now stand and build quality is good. It pretty much follows suit with the other monitors like the less expensive LG 650 series and the other ultra wide that's behind me right there. They all have the same stand. It is a good stand. It has good height adjustability, good tilt, uh, but you're not getting any swivel here. That being said, the actual build quality of the monitor, the panel itself is definitely different. It's thicker than the other ultra wides and it has quite a bit more airflow as well as that RGB, which does have a different design. It looks very similar online, but it is definitely a different design, a little bit more premium, meaning that all of those fins are a little bit bigger. The holes are actually see-through uh, on that red ring so that the RGB can come through it a little bit more. And the overall feeling of the monitor just feels a little bit more solid. Overall, if what you're looking for is the absolute best 34 inch ultra wide gaming monitor that does everything really, really well and compromises on little, then this is it hands down. Again, if you wanna check it out, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links. And thank you for roasting me in the unboxing that I was saying premium too much. What I meant by premium was that you get a box instead of just having it thrown in there. I know it's a little change, but one part of premium that we expect in cars and in other tech like Mercedes Benzes and Lexus and BMW is the fact that we can customize more of what is typically not be able to be customized, like the RGB on the back actually works and there's an app that you can control it. Then you have on-screen control. You have local dimming that just changes all these things. And some people may not choose to do all of those things or to use all of those things, uh, but they are there if you want them. That is the definition of premium to me. And uh, that's why I said it. You also get all of the cables that you want in the box, which some less premium monitors do not give you, right? They'll give you an HDMI, they'll give you a display port, but they won't give you every cable this one does. And more premium monitors do do that. Beyond that, the actual physical construction of the panel is far superior to something like a GN650. Their lower end monitors, which are still fantastic and the panel uh, is still really good, but that one doesn't compromise pretty much on anything except the fact that it is an IPS panel, uh, which is fantastic. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, edit out to you, help me out and throw a like below. And I've really been enjoying reading all of your guys' comments. I know I don't comment back all the time. I have two channels that I run uh, and I put equal amount of work into both of them. So it is, it is pretty tough to comment back. But yeah, this is Type C Tech Reviews and I'll see you guys in the next video.